Hello everyone, my name's Luke Richards and today I'm presenting on behalf of the Earthwatch Institute Australia, presenting our program Climate Watch and celebrating our progression from mobile phone to climate science. Before I begin, I'd like to thank the Australian Government for supporting our placement at this year's conference via the Inspiring Australia program. Today, I'll be introducing you to Earthwatch and the Climate Watch program before celebrating the use of Climate Watch as a tool to collect robust scientific data and as a vehicle to increase science literacy in our communities. I'll tell you about how to get involved, no matter who you are, where you are, anywhere, anytime. That's the goal of the Climate Watch program. A quick background on Earthwatch. We're a global environmental charity with offices in America, the UK, Japan, India, and here in Australia. We specialize in citizen science and experiential learning, and we continuously work towards empowering people to save the natural world. We want citizens to be engaged and to work to protect the environment that's around them. We seek to achieve this by providing opportunities to experience science through your work, life, and play. By providing corporate learning experiences, student and teacher learning programs, and public expeditions, we're continuously working towards our mission of achieving a society that lives in balance with nature. And now to Climate Watch, Australia's premier phenological network. This is the program that I'll be celebrating with you today. It was developed by Earthwatch Australia, the Bureau of Meteorology and the University of Melbourne in 2009. And it's shaping our country's response to climate change by monitoring how the biological world is responding to climate variability. So how does it work? Well, Climate Watch is app based, meaning you can contribute anywhere and at any time. Simply head to the App Store or Google Play to download Climate Watch to your iPhone or your Android phone. You can set up your free account and then head to the website to study the key indicator species that we've carefully selected with our science advisory panel. These species were selected due to their indicative properties for the environmental conditions around them. Once you're comfortable with the species list and the local flora and fauna around you, Head out to your local Climate Watch trail or to your backyard or any parkland, any nature strip around you and start making your spots. Once you've submitted a spot, we'll validate it on the back end to ensure it's accurate for your species identification, the behavior or the phenophase identified, and then we'll transfer the data to the Atlas of Living Australia where it's openly accessible for researchers, policymakers, land managers or citizens like yourself. Now I mentioned Climate Watch Trails. In partnership with local councils, parks managers like Park Victoria and other community groups, we've developed over 85 trails all around Australia. The purpose of these trails is to provide citizens with a chance to enhance their climate watching experience and to really truly and deeply engage with the natural world around them. An added benefit is the accumulation of repeat data that these trails can provide, which is critical for phenological studies. Which brings me to Horizon One, our first point of celebration for today's presentation, which is Climate Watch's ability to collect robust scientific data. I want to quickly take you all the way back to 2007, when IPCC requested mass data sets to understand how climate change was impacting biological life and species ecology. Historically, the Southern Hemisphere didn't have any continental scale multi-species studies in the phenological space, which is why Climate Watch was launched in 2009. Now, due to the mass data required, the scale and the challenge of that data collection, we implemented a citizen science model to fast track data collection. Now, of course, with citizen science, data validation is critical. The spots come through to us, where our team validates them under the guidance of our scientific advisory panel. And once, va once valid, we transfer them to the Atlas of the Living Australia, where, as I mentioned, they're freely available. 
Now I want to bring your attention to a case study to really celebrate the research impacts of Climate Watch and citizen science. The case study I'm going to use are the species distribution models that Earthwatch produced in partnership with the Biodiversity and Climate Change Virtual Laboratory hosted at Griffith Uni. The aims of this project was to develop range change maps for 141 terrestrial climate watch species under different climatic scenarios. We use climate watch data supplemented with Atlas of Living Australia data to provide the species occurrence records with the environmental data overlaid to model the different climatic and environmental conditions from now up until 2070. From here, we made an assessment on habitat suitability for each of the species. The outcomes of this project was 141 species distribution maps and models which showed distinct changes in expected species ranges due to predicted changes in climatic and environmental conditions. Now these models can provide researchers, land managers, policy makers with critical resources to support their decision making processes. And these models were only possible because of the robustness of the data collected by citizen scientists under the Climate Watch program. Therefore, this case study is a terrific example of citizen scientists using Climate Watch, collecting robust data that's scientifically valid and making a true impact to our understanding of how climate change is impacting the biological world. Which brings me to Horizon 2 and our second point of major celebration today, which is Climate Watch's ability to be a tool to increase science literacy. As I mentioned, Earthwatch continuously works to empower people to save the natural world. However, we, we must recognize that without understanding and knowledge, action is often very scarce. We usually don't act for something that we don't care about, and it's very difficult to care about something if we don't understand it at all. This is why we work to improve science literacy in the community and in the schooling system. Today, I'm going to talk about just one approach, which is the schooling system, the formal education system in our society. However, I'd like to point out that there are numerous avenues to increase science literacy, be it through community groups, social education, culture, or even religious pathways. There are many avenues out there to see science literacy improve but I am going to talk about the education system today. Climate Watch's entry into education was effectively through a partnership with Cool Australia. We partnered in 2018 with the aim to develop lesson plans and educational materials to integrate citizen science and Climate Watch into the classroom to improve the science literacy of students and improve their enthusiasm and really engage them with citizen science and climate science as a whole. To support the lesson plans, we developed a series of professional development workshops, which we're still holding today. As you can see here, the lesson plans we had developed covered a series of subjects from science for year sevens and eights to maths, to geography, again, year sevens to eights, and even geography, for year nines to tens. Through these different lesson plans, totaling 20, um, students have the opportunity to really experience climate watch, climate science, and even refine work ready skills like data analysis and data communication. Now, if we want to celebrate impact, since 2018, when Climate Watch in Schools was launched, We've trained over 100 teachers in how to deliver the Climate Watch lesson plans in their classroom and how to integrate citizen science in their daily activities. We've seen over 7,500 Climate Watch lesson plans being downloaded, which equates to about 3,000 teachers delivering our curricula. It's estimated that over 140,000 students have now participated in a Climate Watch lesson, which is incredible knowing that 140,000 students are now engaged and empowered through Citizen Science and Climate Watch. In front of you now, I just want to celebrate some of our classroom testimonials. And these are simply five of dozens that we've received from our teaching cohort. I particularly want to draw your attention to this uh, testimonial in the center of screen, because it shows that students are actually taking their learnings out of the classroom 
out of their classroom obligations, enjoying the nature that's around them, still participating in citizen science and climate watch, and even taking their newfound enthusiasm, their newfound knowledge to their families and engaging them in these activities too, which is exactly what we're striving to achieve. If you would like to become a climate watcher and contribute to Australia's biological understanding of climate change and be a part of our largest phenological network, simply head to climatewatch.org.au or head to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the app for free. You can see my details at the bottom of screen. I am always happy to talk anything Climate Watch, Citizen Science, Climate Science, Phenology, Education, all of the above. Give me a call or shoot me an email anytime. I will always be happy to have a chat. And finally, I'd like to acknowledge all of our supporters, both past and present, from the corporate sector and from government bodies such as Parks Victoria. And in particular, I'd like to acknowledge the Australian government's support under the Inspiring Australia program, whose support has led to the creation of 15 Climate Watch trails along with pivotal partnerships that we've spoken about today. Secondly, I'd like to acknowledge the Department of Education and Training, Victoria, whose support has guided our professional development training with teachers up until this day. And finally, I'd like to thank all Climate Watch trail managers and the public for supporting citizen science in initiatives such as Climate Watch. I look forward to seeing more amazing projects throughout this conference and would like to thank you for your time. Take care.